members of the Diocese of South Carolina, y'all know as well as anybody what it means to run with patience the race. You have endured a long season of uncertainty, change, disruption, pandemic, schism, and that's only the last few decades. Some of you have also endured through the longer centuries of inequality and suffering caused by the sins of prejudice and racism in its many forms. But there is a certain kind of attitude I've come to know among you in my time here, a certain way of being in the world even in times of trouble. Yes, we are saturated in the past. The history here can be heavy, and it has a weight to it, as it should. And yet, we are not overcome. No, instead, as a group of cigar factory workers sang almost 80 years ago right here in Charleston, it is we who shall overcome, who will walk hand in hand into the future. But to get where we're going, we've got to know where we've been. And to understand our times, we've got to be able to name what has happened. We've got to be able to tell the truth as clearly, as bravely, and as hopefully as we can. How we tell the story, how we testify matters. As we enter into a new season together, we do well to honor those who have told the truth in difficult times. There are three such truth-tellers we honor this afternoon, three storytellers, three interpreters of our history, both recent and deep. And so, it is my honor to announce for these three people who would not back down from the truth, the conferring of a special and, dare I say, overdue recognition, the Diocese of South Carolina Chronicler Award. While one of them cannot be here this afternoon, we will soon make our presentation to him in person. As a symbol of their extraordinary contributions to our diocese, each of our chroniclers will receive a custom-designed, one-of-a-kind, hand-turned pen made here in Charleston by Eddie and Brenda Brown of Carolina Turning. I will now announce our three chroniclers. Minerva Brown King. Will you please come forward? Please come forward. All right, I got to talk about you. Minerva King is a native Charlestonian who has proudly kept the traditions and stories of the people who call this place home. In her work as a librarian, in her career as a storyteller, and in her lifelong activism, Minerva has used her voice to bring moral and humane clarity to stories that others have sought to obscure. The daughter of legendary civil rights leader J. Arthur Brown and a graduate of Burke High School, Minerva was part of the student-led sit-in at the Crest Department Store lunch counter in 1960. She continued her education in the classroom and in the movement at Lincoln College in Missouri and Case Western Reserve University. Minerva has been committed her whole career to passing down the hard-won wisdom of her elders, her family, and her own experience to younger generations of leaders. We are especially in Minerva's debt for holding the stories, including some difficult ones, of St. Mark's Episcopal Church and the Diocese of South Carolina. Thank you, Minerva, for your keen vision and for your courage. Your stories give voice to those whose voices have too often been muted. Please accept this pen as a sign of our gratitude and keep telling us what we need to know.
Thank you. Who knew? Who knew? Thank you so much, Bishop, and thank all of you, too. I think probably for one of the few times in my life, I really am speechless. <laughs> but I do thank you so much. Our next chronicler could not be here this afternoon, so I can't ask him to step forward. His presence, however, in the minds and understanding of so many of us gathered here today can hardly be overstated. In 2013, Ronald James Caldwell wrote the following about his mission to record and understand what was happening in the emergent schism in the diocese. It is the historian's job to, one, ask a question, or pose a problem concerning the past. Two, collect all of the existing documented information relevant to the question. Three, organize the information into a logical and reasonable narrative. And then four, draw conclusions on the original questions that are based entirely on the information presented. This quote comes from the very first post on Ron Caldwell's blog dated September 11, 2013, slightly over a decade ago, a source of timely, incisive, and thorough reporting about the conflict that has now been viewed well over a million times. An emeritus professor of history at Jacksonville State University in Alabama and former librarian and assistant head of the South Carolina room of the Charleston County Public Library, Dr. Caldwell's book, a History of the Episcopal Church Schism in South Carolina will stand as an authoritative testimony to the events of the past decades. Generations of scholars will have a solid foundation for their own understandings of the schism because of the work of Ron Caldwell. Dr. Caldwell has provided a voice for many Episcopalians, consistently focusing on the characteristics that make us all innately Episcopal a love of Christ, a love of our neighbors, and wanting to be and create a place where all are truly welcome. He has welcomed comments from all sides and has frequently shared those opinions when he has had permission, of course, and has given a voice and insight into the reactions of people from across the diocese as we live through the effects of the schism for the past decade. Ron has exemplified the role of chronicler, and it will be my honor to present this award to him in person when circumstances allow. <laughs> Finally, last but certainly not least, I'd like to invite Steve Scarden to come forward. Steve, are you in this room? Please say you are. There you are. Come on. Oh, my brother. Oh, my goodness. Thank, Thank you, you very you. much. All right, I got to talk about you, so you got to stay up here. Steve Scarden, Jr., a son of the diocese and the son of one of its priests, was called by Ron Caldwell the lone voice in the wilderness in the long years of dispute before the schism. Steve's long career of public service in our nation's capital and in this state has a me made a meaningful impact in lifting up the marginalized and moving us toward a more just society. Irrepressible and indefatigable, I'm hoping I'm saying that right, that's, that's good enough. Steve has kept the public informed of the people, events, and puzzles of the recent history of the diocese through his website, South Carolina Episcopalians, since 2004. Possessed of a wide-ranging knowledge of the diocese and its members, a rigorous knack for investigation, and above all, an abiding expectation that anyone taking on the mantle of leadership must do so with integrity, Steve's record of this era will endure as a rare portal, not only into the church's hardships, but its moments of grace. As if that weren't enough, his efforts in the Episcopal Forum of South Carolina secured and bolstered a continuing, faithful, proudly Episcopal community in the face of ferocious opposition. 
Steve, it is an honor to present to you this award and this pin, although part of me thinks we ought to give you a slingshot in the face of Goliath you fought back. Thank, Thank you. you. We give thanks for the ministry of these chroniclers among us.